The sons of Ferris Manus are obsessed with modifications, to the point where even their own gene father, Ferris, put limits on this, hiding dark age technology from them. But what could this technology do for the Iron Hands? Why did Ferris seemingly fear them using it? Friends, let's find out and welcome to another 40k video. To outline things clearer, let's stroll over to Horace Heresy Book 2 Massacre. To be as strong as iron was the fire that drove them, and to speed recovery times, cybernetic replacements, swifter by far to employ than the gene region and vat gone transplant techniques, commonly used by the Legionis Astartes, were favoured, getting a fallen or severely injured Legionary back in the fight with frightening speed. That is where these augmentics come in. As a result, no Iron Hand Legionary who had served in battle for any length of time was wholly without augmentation, but such implants were marks of honour. Ferris sees this in his sons, but there were limits to even what Ferris could countenance. And while he lived, certain mysteries of cybermancy, such as the true rites of cybernetic resurrection, remained prescribed as nightmare sciences of the dark age of technology. Where such elements of them were encountered by the Iron Hands Legion during the Great Crusade, and indeed alone amongst the legions, they could readily recognise them for what they were. They were seized and suppressed by the Primarch's express order and withheld. It was rumoured even from the Mechanicum. Whispers remain of such horrors as the Against in Protocols, the Eight Sleepers and the Damned Sarkosan Formula all remained locked under the covenants of the so-called Keys of Hell, named for a mythic goddess of the Medusan pantheon. Kept deep in the vaults of Medusa and sunken chambers on airless rocks orbiting lifeless star systems, where none save a select few of the Iron Fathers of the Legion knew their location. They were put beyond reach, but not destroyed. So if the Iron Hands got access to this, what could they do? The Keys of Hell were the sealed place our father upon all the principles and knowledge that should never be applied. He put it all there. Few outside the Legion knew of the ban placed by Ferris on the Sarkosan formula, the progression of the Seventh Gate and the Ophidian Scale. Even amongst his sons, few knew more than the name and of those who did, most grasped only shadows of dark possibility. Now, out of the named ones that I've gone over there, there is only one really that is brought into this story, so let's focus on that. The Keys of Hell within it held the secrets of cyber resurrection, goal of death and life, bound by field, woven by metal, and sung by axioms of the unknown, created by man in the dark age of tech, or by alien hands, or maybe a combination of both, under cruel suns, their origin does not matter. They are the evolution that our father placed beyond our reach, the lock upon a gate to a denied realm. I have walked through those gates, and now I step between stolen moments amongst the living. I walk with fire, pain, and hatred for all that was brought me here, and for all that has been lost. The connections snap into place down my spine, pain flashes along nerves and cables. My limbs become my own, dead flesh, a machine answering with icy snarls. I know what I am. I open my eyes. Light pours into my world. Projected da da data bathes the chamber before me. Vapor rises from ice clogged machines. I feel the snaking sensation. As a flesh and machine fused to my mind, and I step forward, ice falls from me in brittle scales. So clearly there's been a member of the Iron Hands here who has been subjected to the supposedly hidden knowledge of the cyber resurrection. And now we'll continue with this. Pistons extend and snap my limbs into place. Energy crackles along conduits and I hear iron fingers flex. The pain is everything. Every sensation is a colour of agony. I am a son without a father. I am a warrior risen from the edge of the grave of all he knew and all that created him. I am the dead in a war of fools. I am a life stolen from the dark and lived in oblivion. I walk from my tomb and behind me my brothers wake from their own sleep and follow me to war. Fire I call and the machines in my throat catch the word and carry it to my brothers. They move like sleepers still half in a dream. We fire our weapons, beams and shells rip the shell of the pod from us and we are loose from the wreckage diving towards the fort. We strike the hull, the impact shudders through me as my armour mag clamps to the fort's skin. Bones crack in the remains of my flesh, I rise. Pistons straightening, and I feel my weapon's arm with a tingle of shifting agony. 
hatch blows outwards from the outside of the star fort. Five death guard roar into the vacuum in their void harnesses. I fire and my brothers follow. They are like me. They died on the battlefield from Istvan to Greydock and have slept in cold dreams at my side. More still dream, their cause of life just tatters. They follow and they know the pain of this unlife, but they are spared the thoughts that remain to me. I have walked through those gates, and now I step beyond stolen moments amongst the living. I walk with fire, pain and hatred for all that has brought me here, and for all that has been lost. And as I persist, I think of my gene father, of the warrior who died, who fell, and who allowed himself to be weaker than the universe, and I know now, with every pulse of false life, that he was right. In reference to the keys of hell, in the short story, our character thinks, a key is a beginning, but once the door is open, those beginnings are forgotten. We walk through and leave that brought us there behind. We become the present, we become the inescapable. Now, the marine in this next part is called Sota. He once opposed the undead Iron Hand, fought him, and he was defeated, and has, now he's been brought back. Sota wakes, and waiting for him, when he does, he looks up at me. He no longer has a true face. Lenses and tangles of wire sit at the front of a skull of chrome. I watch the lenses twitch, watch the hand rise and fall, digits flex. Welcome, brother, I say, it he begins and then stops, as though the buzz and click of his voice has surprised him. It is pain, yes, yes I say it is. He rises, each ling moving one at a time, until he is standing, will this end, he asks, and his eyes are not looking at me, but at the exposed flesh of his right hand, waiting for its skin of armour. Yes, I reply, when we wake, no more. He looks for a moment at his still fingers, and then nods, from other sources we know, these iron hands are kept in life support when they are not woken for a battle. Kind of like the dreadnoughts. As part of this, they wake slowly depending on the amount of time they spend in suspended animation. This can be dangerous if the wrong scrap code gets into the machines that keep them asleep. So, let's look at that danger now. From the outside, the sheer ranks of frozen legionaries standing in rows was staggering. Though the mist from the crowd freezing process obscured much, it was obvious to Tekel that there must be hundreds, possibly more, an army, linked by tubes and pipes, their faces locked behind panes of ice. It was cold and it was metal, throughout a laboratory and not a barracks. A keen mind, but once afflicted by hubris and driven by obsession, had created this place. In its raising, Tekel saw everything his Martian masters had warned him about. He saw madness. Ostensibly, it was servo circuit processes, and what lay beyond those cold engineered components was something darker. As Tekel engaged with the machine, he encountered complex neuromorphic subroutines embedded within the, Le the Le Leviathan's standard operating protocols, placed there to resist his efforts to incite a catastrophic shutdown. It could almost be called an, an abominable intelligence, just placed there to protect these few precious warriors. And it possessed the machine, intent on the foreign invaders' expulsion and destruction. He engaged it. The stench of his burning flesh was repellent. The pain almost unbearable, but he held on. Even when his haptic implants fused to the inload ports, he held on. And the marine was able to defeat this leviathan. So now we have covered these hidden secrets of the Iron Hands. I turn things over to you, listener. Do you think Ferris was right to hide this from his sons? I certainly think so. Would you like to know more about the other items in the Keys of Hell? We only have the names... I'm afraid, but that'd be cool to get a bit more law on that. And would you like Ferris to emerge and save his sons with his head attached or held under his arm perhaps like a helmet? Comment down below.